All right. Where are we? What is this strange place that we're in? Oh, we're in a live router. Right? No packet tracer. <gasps> it must be different. No. All right. Let's see our configuration. Show IP route. Look, it's the same thing. Just takes slightly longer. <laughs> okay. Depending on the RAM we have, but we can, we're not going to discuss that at this moment. Now, in this router, we don't have any default routes set up, so we're going to go ahead and actually do it. Now, I can tell them into all the routers, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you. I'm going to pull the console cable out, put it back into the second router, and I'm going to hit enter. Even though I do have space bar, space bar, my line VTY is set up, but uh, we're going to go ahead and let's configure a default route here. Config T. Same command. IP route 0000 0000. 000, 000, 000. Oops. Right? That's four zeros, yes. Exit interface S0 slash 0 slash 0. Same thing we just did. Do WR. Same thing we just see how it takes a little bit longer on a real router. That's the only difference. Why, that's why I like to use the packet tracer a lot of the time. All right, let me exit out of here, do a show IP route. And there you can see your gateway of last resort set. Wow, it looks just like the packet tracer. All right, now let me show you that I can telnet into the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and telnet. And really, you don't even have to type telnet. Uh, I can go 10.1.1.6. Cisco. Cisco Cisco Cisco. And I'm in. But I'm not going to do it that way. Whoa, control shift six. Yeah, see some commands. Now you know I'm in the real router. But some commands just don't work like that. Come on. Oh, sweet mother. Control pause. I'm trying every break command known to mankind. This is one of the reasons that why you type no IP domain lookup. Okay, control shift six should take you out of there, but it's not doing it for some reason. It could be my laptop. I don't have a pause break. Control C is not working. Okay. Well, you can see what it's trying to do. It's trying to broadcast out to a DNS server that we haven't configured. So it's uh, taking forever. Okay, so I'm going to exit. Now I'm back in router one. All right, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to unplug my console cable. And then I'm going to plug it in to router two. And now I'm in router two. So I'm going to exit out of here. Now in router 2, remember, this is where we did our static routes, where we had to point it to the 192.168.1.0 and the 192.168.3.0. Uh, so we got to configure those routes. So IP route. Now here, well, I'll, I'll say when we start doing it. IP route, I want to go to the 192.168.1.0, which is going to the network that's over here. That's a 255.255.255.0. Through the exit interface, S0 slash 0 slash 1, space. Not enter, space. Because one of the things I want to talk about right now is the administrative distance. Now, I said if you use the exit interface, it should show up as a connected route. But in later labs, right, or in later uh, lectures, we're going to talk about dynamic routing. I'm going to use the same lab. So I need to change the administrative distance. What is the administrative distance? The administrative distance is the believability of a route. If it's directly connected, like it would show up here because it's X interface, it would be zero. If it's a next router's hop address, it would be one. Your, the lower the administrative distance, the more believable the route. So directly connected routes, like the ones with C's, they're the most believable. Then your next most believable are your static routes. So when we get to configure RIP, which has an administrative distance of 120, it will never make it to the routing table. Never. Because its administrative distance is not as believable as the static routes. So what do we do? We enter at the end of a static route, we enter a higher administrative distance than the routing protocol that we're going to use. In this case, RIP. RIP usually is the one with the highest 
routing protocol unless you're using external EI GRP, which I believe is 170, which we're not using for the CCNA purposes. Okay, we're using uh, EI GRP, internal EI GRP, which is 90, and then we OSPF, which is 110. So 150 is just fine for O and E because RIP version 2, which would be the first routing protocol that we do, is 120. But why do we do this? And let's go ahead and put in the next static route before I forget where we got to put it into. All right, destination network, destination mask, exit interface, administrative distance, new one, new one, new administrative distance, 150. And I'm going to go ahead and do it the correct way for the test. Copy, run, start. And we still got to go to the last router, router 3, and put a default right in there. But why am I putting, why am I changing the administrative distance of these static entries, these static routes? Because we can have, as you can see, we have default routes at our stub routers. In our middle routers, we're using static routes but with a higher administrative distance, because then we can go ahead and use a routing protocol, have static routes as backups. In case the routing protocol goes haywire, we have static routes there waiting in the wings. In case something goes wrong with the routing protocol, you have a backup, uh, a static route as a backup route. That's the reason I'm showing you this, that you can do this. All right, so you're gonna have a combination of routing configured within your routers and the majority of networks out there do this they have combinations of static routes with routing protocols and a combination of different routing protocols depending on which routers you're configuring all right so let's go to the last router when I get my console cable I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to put it back in to the other uh, router and that is router 3 I'm going to do enable Cisco. Cool. And then I'm going to do, uh, let's take a look. Is that, uh, did I configure this? Show IP, uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Show IP route. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, yes, I don't have no LAN attached to it. Uh, I didn't feel like putting it on third computer. Okay. But well, we can always use a loopback address for that. But when we get to OSPF, we'll do all that. Maybe earlier. I don't know. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our default route here. Config T. Now that we need to, but okay, we're gonna do it anyway. Um, IP route. I want to go to the. Uh, no, no, it's a default route, silly guy. Destination network. Destination mask. Exit interface as zero. Slash zero slash one. That's a default out there. Do WR. Oh, sorry. Some uh, older iOS here. They didn't want to take my do. Okay, and then let's take a look at the routing table. Show IP route. All right, and you see your gateway of last resort is set. So I don't have an entry because I do have a computer that's in the 1.0 network. I don't have an entry in this routing table for that and I'm in router 3 so I should be able to ping 192.168.1. Let's go for the gateway first. I got there. Let's go for the PC next. And right, we got that infamous ARP. Obviously it doesn't want to work. Oh well, well I got to the gateway. So there's something going on with the PC, I didn't configure it or something. But we did get to the gateway, which I'm happy with that. All right, so you see that we can route back and forth. We can route back and forth using a combination of default routes and static routes. But now the only difference that we did from the packet tracer to the live routers is that we went ahead and increased the administrative distance. That way, once we get to dynamic routing and we configure a routing protocol, all right, the routing protocol will take effect. The routing protocol will make it to the routing table and the static routes will remain in the background waiting silently just in case the routing protocol fails for whatever reason. So there you go. 
static routes, administrative distance, default routes, using multiple ways to get from point A to point B. You can see that the live routers are, you know, the same commands than you would, same iOS, all right? One has, I think this is a little bit older iOS that doesn't have the do command, but other than that, it's the same, same thing, all right? With, but the packet tracer, obviously, you're moving at lightning speed. The packet tracer is meant for the CCNA. So you can practice on that safely if you don't have, so you feel confident just because you don't have live equipment. It's the same exact thing. The only thing is that you will be taking a little bit longer on the live routers than you would on the packet tracer. But there you have it, static and default routes. I'll see you in the next section.